In today's episode, we will be exploring the realm of EARTH and playing Tinder, where we'll be trying to find other players to train our mount skills with. Fine girlfriend, 10k! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes and this is Worst MMO Ever, a show where I play the worst MMOs I can find so you don't have to. Now, long-time viewers will know that I think the mobile MMO is the pinnacle of the genre. Some of the best RPGs ever made are available exclusively on mobile. While the console market, such as PlayStation and Xbox, is definitely substantial, and the PC offers more freedom, more customization, more flexibility in gaming, smartphones are definitely the game system of the future. To see how smartphone gaming is the future, you only need to go to the Google App Store, and you'll see amazing games, such as... Order and Chaos 2, 3D MMORPG, described as This game is pretty good. Or X-War, Clash of Zombies, described in one review as It's just some strategy game, but with movies, heroes, and zombie enemy. Or how about Grand Gangster Miami City Auto Theft, described in a review as this is one of the worst games I have ever seen. There are many reasons to say that. One, it's very laggy. Two, the controls are so bad. Three, it's hard to control the guy we took and many more reasons. So yeah, smartphones are good. So today I'm going to play through one of the most famous mobile MMOs and see what the fuss is all about. Now because this is a mobile MMO and I'll be using my phone to play the game, I will put screenshots up so you can see what I'm doing today. We're playing through the MMO Tinder. Tinder is a free, massively multiplayer service which matches people online and allows them to meet up and, if they're into it, experience some roleplay, meaning it hits all the letters of the MMORPG acronym. It is a free-to-play game, which means it's heavily biased in favour of those who pay to win, and it's probably one of the only MMOs or RPGs ever where the charisma stat matters more than every other stat combined. Now this is a game that I've seen my girlfriend has been playing recently. She's been trying to hide it from me, but I've seen her. She's got AFK Arena on her phone. She's been playing through Old School RuneScape and then Tinder. And I've asked what it's all about. And she says it's about meeting other people to go on quests. And I'm excited to do that. That's something that I really think I would be able to do well and look forward to. So let's see what it's all about. In fact, when I've been out at work, she's been having other people who also play Tinder who you know come around and game with her for a bit so it's obviously a very popular thing I hear it's played heavily in universities so let's see what it's all about first off character creation now character creation in Tinder is really strange you don't make your character your character is actually made for you by two older players many years before you start playing you've got a couple of classes that you can choose from but some of them are utterly utterly useless when you play through the game you get given the chance to go into the education classes you can go into the arts classes you can go into the trades classes some of the classes though are exclusive to people who have friends or family or relatives already working in that class. If you want to get into the film or TV industry, you basically have to have a guild member or a clan member or a close friend already working there, otherwise you're not going to get into it. But the gameplay moment to moment is pretty simple. You simply get a list of profile pictures of other players and you swipe right if you want to go on a quest with them and you swipe left if you don't want to go on a quest with them. Quick glitch I've discovered though, if you just swipe right on absolutely everyone, then you massively increase your chances of being able to go on a quest with anyone. This is a bug in the game. Seeing as we want to go on a quest with as many people as we possibly can, then swiping right on everyone is the best way to gather your party and venture forth quicker. It's actually quite, uh, it's quite therapeutic. Oh, no. No, not you. Everyone else is fine, though. Once you've got several matches of people who want to go on quests with you, you have to physically meet up with them in a realm called Earth. Now, Earth is pretty darn big. There's lots of different biomes, lots of locations you can travel around to. But again, just like character creation, you don't choose the realm that you start on. The two older players that made your character choose the realm that you start on. Now, you can switch realms. Totally possible to do, but remarkably expensive. A couple of realms are ruled by guilds already, and you need to meet the guild requirements to go into those realms. A few of the realms are already full. Some people are leaving one realm to go to another realm. 
but I've chosen the easy mode. I've decided to start in the UK realm. Now the UK realm is not the biggest or the most populated realm, and up until recently it was part of the European mega realm, although it decided to leave for some reason. Which does mean if you decide to play on the UK realm, by the way, that trade is about to become a lot more complicated. Okay, with several quest matches already matching up, people who want to go on quests with me, it's time to go and meet them. So we've got to put our armor on and venture out into the world. Let's go. So with the match made, I am on my way to meet the person I'm going to quest with. Now, I've discovered there is a mount system in this game. Basically, they are things that allow you to travel around quicker. They're mainly cars and motorbikes and bicycles and horses. There is also another more complex mounting system in this game that seems to involve something to do with cowgirls or missionaries, but I'm not quite sure what that is because I haven't got to that level yet. I'll let you know if I discover what it actually is. Now, one major flaw I've discovered is that a lot of players, when you start talking to them, are very keen to go on quests with you, but when they discover that your character is under six foot tall, they suddenly end the quest line right there. So remember, during character creation, if you, especially if you're playing a male, if you are under six foot tall, a lot of quests will suddenly be cut off to you, which is very annoying and definitely a bug that needs to be patched out. Right, just up ahead is the person that I was planning to quest with. And they don't, um, they don't look anything like their profile picture. That's, that's not the person I was planning on meeting. No, we need to go. We, we need to, we need to go now. Okay. Okay, she's gone. So, major glitch with the game that I've just discovered. Um, you can put whatever profile picture you want and you can say that you are whatever class you want even if you aren't actually that class or don't know that profile picture what a lot of people seem to be doing is using third-party filters or in the case of ff14 the gpo system and making themselves look way prettier than they actually are which is having an adverse effect when you try and form a party based mainly on appearances so that's definitely something i think the developers need to be looking at and taking into account I think uh, I think I'm going to be much more cautious before making a making a party again on Tinder. This game has this game has a lot of exploits. Okay, she's gone. So the quest that I signed up for was to meet a level 23 cleric and go and explore a dungeon together. But when I arrived at the quest start, turns out it was actually a level. 45 warlock who had previous followers from a previous quest and she wanted me to provide for and take care of those and that isn't really the adventure I was interested in having so I decided to abandon that quest right there and then and run away. Uh, there is a cool pet system in the game though so let's look at that now. You can actually capture and domesticate almost any animal you like, although there are a few that are much easier to capture than others. Because the entire draw of Tinder seems to be going on a quest with other people and everything you do is about increasing the chance of finding a questing partner, having a pet is definitely a good bonus. This is a game where charisma matters much more than anything else, and having a dog or a cat shows a charisma increase. The only drawback of the pet system is you do need to take care of them, and if you don't take care of them, they will hate you for a long time. You need to make sure they're fed and watered and walked every single day. But if you can put a collar and a leash on it, it can become yours. This applies to most animals and even some people. Just check they're into that first and establish a safe word before you go down that route. So, first impressions of Tinder, and should you play it? It is a free online RPG that you can download to your phone right now and meet other people, also hoping to go on quests and adventures with you. You will meet many people claiming to be classes that they aren't, or having profile pictures that don't actually show them, but you will meet several interesting, fun, agreeable, genuine people along the way, and hopefully you'll be able to explore some dungeons together. The drawbacks of the game are the character creation system being completely out of your hands, the game being completely based on charisma and appearance, the stats don't actually matter that much, the pet system being unfairly weighted and the cooking system that we haven't even begun to look at having a massive pull on whether you get invited to parties or not. So all in all if you do decide to play remember character creation matters way more than you think and charisma is the only important stat you need to look into unless you have lots and lots of money in which case the entire thing just becomes completely pay to win. 
As for today, thank you very much for joining me, and the list of people on screen now are the people who I would definitely, definitely swipe right on. The Patreon supporters, thank you very much for allowing this channel to do what it does, and I will see you next week with a video when it's not April the 1st.